Good evening everybody and a warm welcome to you if you're here for the first time. I usually start off these uh, meditations by telling you what a beautiful day it is here in New York. Uh, well today it's not. It's cold and windy and rainy and it's about 12 degrees. I guess that's like a Belfast summer's day. So for people who are here for the first time, what is the essence of Sahaja Yoga meditation? Without giving you a lecture, because I'd rather just show you and let you experience it for yourself. But I have to say something. In every human being, in the sacrum bone, the large triangular bone at the base of the spine, there's an energy, a feminine energy. And she's known about in many cultures of the world. She has different names in different cultures. I'm going to call her Kundalini, which means coiled. She's coiled up in the sacrum bone. And it's an evolutionary step for her to be awakened. You've probably heard in all the great religions of the world, they say the kingdom of God is within. And awakening this Kundalini energy is a direct way for you to experience the truth of that yourself. And she only awakens with your desire. There's nothing to believe in this, nothing to join, no money to pay. But nobody can force it on you. You're looking at a photograph of Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. She's one of the greatest personalities in the history of spirituality. In the past, if you could find a someone to awaken your Kundalini, it would be one on one and it could easily take 30 or 40 years of intense privation and discipline. And even then it might not happen. Sri Mataji made a unique contribution. She worked out a way of giving this awakening en masse. And I've personally seen her do it in a football stadium in India with more than 60,000 people at the Royal Albert Hall in London where there were more than 4,000 people every year for a number of years. And in New York, at the New York Town Hall and the Society for Ethical Culture on East 64th Street. So let's go straight in and try this. Take it as an experiment. Sit with your feet slightly apart and your back straight and the palms of your hands open on your lap. So the palms are pointing upwards. Take your right hand and put it on your heart. And ask yourself the question about three times. Say, Am I the spirit? Now let your right hand slide down your body until it's at the stomach, just underneath the rib cage on the left side. And here, ask the question, Am I my own master? Or if you like, guru or teacher. 
it adds up to the same thing. Am I my own master? About ten times, but no need to count. Then let your right hand drop down to the bottom of your torso on the left side. And hold this quite firmly with your right hand. And say about six times. Please let me Know the truth. Please let me have the pure knowledge. So here's a hypothesis. In this place exists all the knowledge of the spirit that you or I need. It's here pre-programmed waiting to be awakened. Please let me have the pure knowledge. Then let your hand come up again to the top of your stomach on the left side where it was before. we're speaking about how things will be. When this pure knowledge starts to show up in your day-to-day -day life, truly you become your own master. So here we say about 10 times, I am my own master, guru or teacher, whichever you feel comfortable with. I am my own master. Bring your right hand onto your heart. Now in the heart resides the spirit. And with this Kundalini awakening, you'll discover, if you don't know already, that we are not just this body, this blood and bones, this mind, this intelligence, if you strip all of that away, truly we are the spirit. So say here about 12 times, I am the spirit. Now take your right hand and put it where the neck joins the shoulder on the left side. And turn your head a wee bit to the right. Now this is a center that causes all sorts of trouble in the West. And especially in my experience in Ireland. For we feel guilty. With the awakening of this energy, as we become the spirit, the things we feel guilty about will take a back seat. 
So just say about 16 times, but don't count. I am not guilty. I am not guilty. I am not guilty. Now put your right hand flat across your forehead. Let your head fall forward a wee bit into the palm of your hand. And say a couple of times, I forgive everyone, including myself. Just say the words. Don't think about who you should forgive or who you won't forgive. Who did you wrong? Don't worry about that. Just say the words at this stage. I forgive everyone, including myself. This center known as the Agnya Chakra only opens when we forgive. And you will find forgiveness to be an amazingly powerful thing. So take your right hand and put it on the back of your head. And let your head fall back into the palm. And as we've forgiven, so we ask for forgiveness. We say, if I've made any mistakes against my spirit, please forgive me. A couple of times. If I've made any mistakes against my spirit, please forgive me. And then stretch out your right hand so the palm is stretched and the fingers are pointing upwards and put the palm in the crown of your head in the place that was soft when we were babies and press down rotate your scalp in a clockwise direction and if you're new to this say Please let me have my self-realization seven times. And if you've been practicing for a while, you can say, please establish my self-realization about seven times. When you finish, put your right hand back in your lap, palm up. Keep your focus at the top of your head where your hand was for a few minutes. And I'm just going to play some music that will be nice to meditate with.
So let's slowly open our eyes. So the word Sahaj means two things in Sanskrit language. It means inborn, born within us. And it also means spontaneous because this energy rises from the sacrum bone to the top of our head in a fraction of a second. So if you'd like to know how to meditate at home, if you go into the files, if you look at the meditation online on Facebook and you click files, you'll find all you need to meditate by yourself at home. And this is really important. If you really want to make something out of this, try to do it twice a day, five, 10 minutes each time. Often requires quite a lot of self-discipline, but if you just build it into your schedule, you get up, you go to the bathroom, you make a cup of tea, and then you meditate. Come home from work and either you meditate there or just before you go to bed, whatever works for you. So normally when we begin a meditation or end it, we do an exercise on our attention. Let me show you what it is. And again, I'm not going to give you the theory behind it, but there's a reason for everything we do. Put your left hand opposite the sacrum bone, maybe six inches or so away from your body. And you slowly bring up your left hand and you keep your attention on your left hand as it comes up. You take your right hand and put it between your body and your left hand. Bring your right hand up over the top of the left hand and describe a big circle around your left hand with your right hand. Your right hand is always going away from you. So when you get up to about head level, put your head back and with both hands tie a big knot above your head. We do that three times. Let's do it a second time. Do it slowly with full attention. Head back, tie a second. We do it the third and final time. Head back, and this time we tie three. One, two, three. For the three channels of subtle energy in the spine. And then we give ourselves a protection. This is how you do it. So your left hand is on your lap, palm up. You put your right hand over towards your left hip. And you bring your right hand up the left side of your body and over the top of your head and down to the right hip and back again. You bring your right hand up the right side of your body over the top of your head and down to the left hip. So over and back is one and you do it seven times, once for each of the seven principal chakras in the spinal column. Let's do it a second time. Third time. six and seven so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have I had the great pleasure today 
of seeing my grandson who lives in just outside London, George Wary. I hope he enjoyed it. And my prospective daughter-in-law, Linda, who's from Nace in County Kildare. She's sitting beside me. I see Catriona from Cork and Pallavi from New Jersey and Louisa from Florida and William from Colombia in South America. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and I'll look forward to meditating with you again this time next week. All the best.